This is bigger. I had a devil hook up. Do you want to go for a hike? Charlie? Hike? Up one in forty eight feet. Not quite sunrise yet, but man, is that beautiful! All right, just caught two goat fish there. I got two smaller ones, so I'm just gonna let these go. But I did just mark some bait right there. It's usually how it goes. You're screwing around and that's when you mark the bait or you're fighting like a stupid trigger fish or something. You got bored, dropped it to the bottom. Anyhow, but I caught two Opelu earlier. One right, um, right before a sunrise and 48 feet. And then I caught another one about an hour later trolling through 60 feet up into shallower water. But I'll try for bait for just a little bit longer. Yeah, I've got these two, two little goat fish, and Uku could easily eat that. So, I'm feeling better that I got at least some bait. Marking a ton of something on the bottom. I was going to drop the down machine, but I know that's a bad idea, so I'm dropping a jig down through there. Hooked up, 205. Whatever this is, it hit it on the drop. And I hooked up right near the bottom.
Yeah. Ooh, it's barely hooked. That was cool though. <laughs> Good little fish. <laughs> A lot of fun. <laughs> Alright. Hooked up 205. Another small one. Must be a school of them. I should have lost the fish right there. I let pressure off completely to show you guys the fish finder. Yeah, another. Another little GT. This guy was hooked pretty good though. Yeah, a little bit smaller one. And that guy Got really smashed on his head at some point. There he goes. <laughs> I was gonna let him go anyway. <laughs> nice. That was fun messing with those GT Giant Trivoli. But I've got the bait, so what I've been thinking is I've got the two Opelu, both are in really good shape. Uh, at least when I caught them, I'll check them out now. But I'll throw one of the Opelu out now. Something was chewing on it. Well, that was a shark. And I suspect that it was a tiger shark. It's pretty rare that it just chews off everything but the head. But I was about to bring that bait in and just go do some vertical jigging, but um, I guess that's what we're gonna do now. I still have one Apelu and then those two small goatfish. With the goatfish, one I'd like to try and catch like a Omilu, a bluefin trevally, so I'll do that in shallow. And then the other one I'd like to drop out here and try and catch a, an Uku a jobfish. Is 
set up a knocker rig with, I think it's a half ounce weight, maybe. And then I got this little tiny goat fish. It's awfully squirmy. And I'm just gonna hook them sideways through the lips. That ought to be candy for something. I'm out in 206 right now, so I'll probably try and drop that like 30 or 40 feet off the bottom. And then just kind of go along. I'll keep vertical jigging, and then if something hits that, great. If not, or if it gets eaten by a shark, whatever. Um, I just don't want to fight the shark. Before I drop this back down, I'm just going to try and make sure that the hook is still semi-sharp. Uh, I usually do that by, if it sticks into my nail, then I think it's sharp enough. I do have a sharpening stone, and I actually sharpened it before I started dropping down and hooked into that first little GT. Uh, in Hawaiian, you call the, both of those papillos. This is bigger. <laughs> Hooked up in one ninety nine. Another GT, better size. Twenty five ish pounds, this one. Nice. Uh, sweet GT. They're getting, or this one's quite a bit bigger. Um, good fish, great fight on the vertical jig. This one's pretty fat and wide. Nice. All right. Thanks for the fight, buddy. See ya. Just gonna check the jig and the line after catching that. That last Alua, the GT Giant Trevally, the hook still feels pretty good. But these uh, 
they're really digging this blue and silver color. This jig has already caught like, I want to say five, five GT. I've drifted a little bit to the west from where I was just at. I've got, still got that goat fish right there. I'm surprised nothing hit it. It was down 30, 40 feet off the bottom and I saw stuff come up and look at it on the fish finder, but nothing hit it. Um, but I'm gonna move back over where I was getting all these marks and then I'll drop the goat fish down, maybe a little bit lower in the water column and then do some more vertical jigging. All right, get the GT slime off there. That's just a bottle of fresh water that I'm using to clean the screen off. In a, in a pinch, you can clean the GoPro screens off that way, but it's better to just keep them dry. Uh, anyhow, uh, if you guys want more tips on, on filming or how I set up my GoPros or any of that kind of stuff, just let me know. Um, I mainly use these um, moisturized wipes that I get from Target. I'll just show you one of those really quick. Pre-moisturized lens wipes, and that'll that'll work to get it clean. And the other thing that I found that's the best is just to carry a little bit of toilet paper and then wipe it dry after you use this, and then you'll have a perfectly clean, a perfectly clean um, lens. feels a little different. There's a huge school of something now. Oh, it's just a ton of pepio. Or a ton of, look, look at this. The fish finder is totally covered. That's nuts. I saw a couple of them come up with it. Nice. Marking something on the bottom right now. Maybe that's that school again. Gonna let you go, bro. Yeah, tons of them. gonna drop it back down. Another nice little GT. This is probably right about 10 pounds. Sweet. Up in 204 on that, uh, that little goat fish on that knocker rig. This could be another GT. Yeah, big head shakes. I was hoping for a job fish, an uku or a blue green snapper. We'll take it. 
I can see it coming up on the fish finder 140 right now. It looks like the school is with it. So this underwater footage ought to be pretty nuts. Or maybe not. The uh That's a shark. These sharks are just waiting for me to throw this thing in. I just saw one of them. But let's get them back. Yeah, shark right there. Despite what that might have looked like, I w really wasn't trying to get the sharks to come in and eat that small giant trevally. I knew that, I mean, they could have eaten it at any point while I was reeling it in, especially when I was getting that first underwater footage. What I could tell from the footage, um, I think that PO made it back down to the bottom. The, the visibility was somewhere right around 50 to like 60 feet. So I really hope he made it back down. I'm not interested in, in feeding the sharks. And if you're wondering why I'm doing a voiceover over this footage, it's because my old pole camera, the GoPro Hero 3 Plus, it finally died. And so I swapped out the camera that is normally on the camera monopod behind my left shoulder. The issue I'm having is that it's picking up all kinds of noise from within the hole. The rudder line slaps against the hole. It picks up all that noise and it's really annoying. So try and catch a wahoo, but... I'm starting to think it's better to just jig like something it something's there but not looking at the screen so then you actually jig the the water column because really I've just been jigging the bottom half but the top half is where the fish that I want to catch are gonna be the rainbow runners the the tuna it's pretty unlikely chance of a wahoo but I know people who catch them on jigs I'm gonna 
show you what I'm looking at here. Just some random junk on the bottom. Actually, hooked up right on the bottom. Cool. Kind of a different fight. Maybe. But with how quickly those other sharks showed up. I think I should just rip this guy in. Probably another GT. <laughs> yep. Another small one. <laughs> My uh, vertical jig's looking pretty torn up, but it's still working. about seven pounds nice fish they're they're really pretty different colors this one's pretty white but. Two hundred feet now. No head shakes.
I don't know what this is, but it's big. And I suspect that it's a shark. I'm out in almost 500 feet now. It's still towing me, but I'm to 50 feet. So, it's like I'm gonna at least be able to find out what this is. I think it's a big shark. My drag is extremely tight. There we go. And at least I got some underwater footage of it. So I should be able to tell exactly what that was. It was some big shark. Towed me all the way out to 660 feet. Jeez. Ugh. Man, that kicked my ass. I was really hoping to hook into a wahoo. Uh, at least that's what I was going for when I was live baiting in shallow with the wire. Right around 90 or 100 feet when, when I hooked up. Aside from the bite, the run of that giant hammerhead shark really wasn't kind of like a normal shark run. I don't know if it was just because it was a hammerhead or the size, but um, it pulled me all the way out to almost 700 feet. But on the bright side, uh, while I was, while I was pulling me out through 300 to 400 feet, I marked a huge school of some kind of fish on the bottom. All right, well, that didn't take long down there. I got something on. I got a lot of line to reel in. Hooked up in 408. This rig had two hooks on it. I'm also reeling up a one pound weight. I had a devil hook up. And I got two Kahala. Luckily they are pretty small. Or at least this one's pretty small. The other one's a fair bigger. Still pretty cool. Man, that thing is super light colored. Oh, still got my bait. Nice.
That was pretty cool. Uh, I was hoping to catch one of those like deep snapper, but uh, surprised that it came up with two amberjack on there, uh, kahala and Hawaiian. But I've still got enough for probably two more drops. Those might all be amberjacks. I'm expecting this to be an instant bite again. Yep, hooked up. I still got my bait from that last drop, so I'm gonna drop it down one more time. Pretty sweet to, to get some confidence out here deep dropping. And since it's just barely over 400, I, I can call it deep dropping, at least in my book anyway. It's not too bad of a crank up, reeling that thing in. I've only got 30 pound um, leader on here. The, the, the rig itself is 60 pound, so. Can't go too crazy, but that 30 pound held up for almost 20 minutes fighting that huge shark. Still, I mean, obviously I don't know what it is yet, but I mean, you guys will in the video. Going down in 500 this time, ish. I didn't change the bait. It was still on there. I'm lazy. My arms hurt. Maybe there'll be some different fish out here. It's slightly deeper. There's my fifth AJ. Hooked up. 680. It's the deepest I've ever hooked up. Feels like something a little better. It's a real bummer, but I end up getting hooked on the bottom on this one, and I definitely had a shot at bringing that fish up, um, 
you can see the head shakes, you can see it taking line. And, and I think it was something other than an amberjack, just because when a big amberjack hits, it will just scream line off. It doesn't matter if it's 700 feet down. So I just need to break this thing off. Shouldn't be that hard. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a thumbs up or even a comment. It really helps the channel out. And I really hope that you all are doing well wherever you are in the world. Here in Hawaii, the, although this video was filmed back in May of 2019, the coronavirus really hasn't started to kick off. 